Hey guys, Jeff here from Pat Pro Movies, and welcome to Akshanika, day number seven. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about film scoring. And I know this can be very subjective to the piece you're working on, but I'll show you a little bit of the process and workflow we use to um, score for some of our action sequences. And uh, in the meantime, I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to get a little more punch or clarity from your mixes. So let me take you into Logic and we'll get started. Okay guys, welcome to my Logic session here. The track is called Drunkception, and you may hear why in just a minute. But I want to start you out with a little overview of what all is actually going on here in the session. I've got quite a few tracks here of orchestral drums. And orchestral drums are just great for giving a huge epicness to the piece. And of course this action short was very worthy of epic music. So um, started building around the piece with the drums and then started adding other elements such as little sound design elements you may hear here. I'll play you one here. Those kind of things, little builds and crescendos. And uh, also I've got French horns, trombones, um, horn sweeps, horn crescendos, 70 piece orchestra, and then at the bottom here in blue are actually my guitars that I recorded. So uh, I'll walk you through a little bit more of that in just a minute. One of the most important things about music getting started here is um, the tempo. And uh, you really wanna get the tempo right to your piece. I basically just watch the piece and uh, use the tap tempo function, which allows you to tap your keyboard, and um, it'll automatically find that tempo at the rate you're tapping at. So I'll watch the piece and uh, start tapping my keyboard and get a feel for the tempo and how fast I think it should be. And I ended up with a pretty quick tempo on this one, 162, that's actually pretty quick. Another important thing you wanna be aware of is uh, what's called spotting, or just watching the piece and finding out where you want to put music and where you don't wanna put music. Uh, both are equally as important. It's important to have a good dynamic in your piece to um, sell the epic scenes and then sell scenes that are more driven by dialogue or humor, that kind of thing. So in this piece, you'll hear a lot of dynamics. Also, another important aspect to the music is the time signature. And if you haven't studied music, you may not know much about it, but it's basically how many beats are in any given measure. And um, for this piece, I chose a little uh, stranger time signature. It's actually a 7-4 time signature. And I feel it gives a more unsettling sense because typically you'd have four beats in a measure. Whereas when you have seven, uh, you feel like maybe the phrase never really ends and it makes you feel more awkward or unsettling. And that's what I was really trying to sell in this piece is a sense of awkwardness and um, to make the listener feel the tension in the piece. So I want to start you off with the orchestral drums that were used. I actually use a plugin called Storm Drum. It's made from the East West Library. Um, you may not have access to these plugins. They're a little bit more expensive but um, I can highly recommend them. They're definitely worth it. I've basically got um, quite a few drums going on here. I'll let you take a listen to them. And if you don't have access to these libraries, you can use Logic Loops to uh, get you started, start laying some loops in and building around them and uh, get something you're proud of. Also, you can use normal drum kit loops in your piece. Uh, I'm gonna take you down here to um, some of the sound design elements of my music. Um, I do like to sound design separately. However, in the music realm, there's also some musical sound effects I can use. And I'll show you some of these here. Um, in the scene where Philip goes to attack Rob with his rifle, um, there's a slow motion ramp, and I help sell that with this uh, musical effect. Pretty cool there, it's kind of a backwards uh, swell going on. Um, also, you'll find in this piece a lot of horns, and uh, this is where the Inception um, theme kind of played in. Um, I got these, um, you notice they're called Inception horns here and bones, and uh, they're just basically big, boomy um, horns. So there you go. I've got those uh, panned hard left and hard right to give a, a very um, in-your-face kind of sound to it. Uh, also in this piece you'll hear some, uh, some horn swells and sweeps, like this. There you go. And those can all be found in the uh, East-West Library. This is the Symphonic Orchestra Library for East-West. Um, 
These are pre-played patches that you can um, apply to your mixes. Pretty simple, but extremely effective. Also in this piece, I've got a 70-piece orchestra, and this uh, kind of gives some tension notes to the piece. There you go. That just kind of builds as the piece uh, flourishes. And lastly, I'd highly recommend recording electric guitars for your piece if you have the ability or know someone who plays, especially for action movies. Um, they really add a huge dynamic to your piece. And um, basically, these files were actually recorded in Pro Tools. I prefer to do my live recording within Pro Tools and my MIDI recording within Logic. But I brought these files back over Logic for the tutorial. So I started out with the bass guitar. And uh, just listen to the drums of the piece and find a great chunky riff that uh, really helps sell the tension in the piece. So here's this. And that's just a bass guitar run through an Ibanez Tube Screamer and plugged directly into my Pro Tools interface. Next up is electrics. And actually this is two electric guitars. I condensed them onto one file. You can hear them here. And the electric guitars were tuned down to drop C for this piece. The lower you go with your tuning, the more chunky, the more heavy it gets. So um, I recommend tuning down, especially for these kind of pieces. Also, the two guitars recorded were two completely different takes. A lot of people prefer just to digitally double their guitar takes. However, as a purist, I prefer to play the same take over again, identically. However, there's always something a little different, so they will have different nuances in each take. And then pan them hard left and hard right. And that gives you a huge sound, like a big wall of sound coming at you with the electrics. So um, pretty cool there. Next up is um, adding some lead guitars to the piece. You can hear it there. Um, that's just a simple little palm muted riff I came up with. I started toying with the idea and adding some harmonies to it to build this huge tension going on here. So here's the harmony. And then a third harmony. So there you go there, starting to build up the tension. Scrolling to the end here, at the end of this piece, I attribute the same idea with those harmonies, except this time I didn't palm mute. I used an octave riff and played this. Added a harmony. And then a third harmony. And you'll hear the complete mix here. Also something to note with the guitars is that um, guitars carry a lot of low-end information that you may not need. And um, I've actually equalized these in Pro Tools and brought them over, so they have the effect already on them. But I'll show you how to use a simple EQ curve to um, clean up some of your guitar takes. Um, I also always start by uh, basically dropping all information from an electric guitar below 100 hertz. You really don't need that if you have a bass guitar in there, because the bass guitar is going to carry that information. If it's there in the guitar tracks, it's just going to muddy it up. So I'll take that out. And a lot of times lead guitars may need a little presence there at 5k, or maybe around 1k or 2k. So uh, in that general area is a good place to start. Even with the chunky guitars, you can take out that uh, low 100 hertz information. It's just not needed. It's just going to muddy up your mix. The bass guitar is going to take care of that. So a simple EQ. Also on the lead guitars, I added some reverb and delay just to help sell that um, lead guitar effect. Really sits well. And coming towards the end here, we've got a huge buildup. Obviously, I don't have the final video in here, but this was a placeholder. And you can hear I'm just basically walking up the chromatic scale with the guitars, uh, creating a huge sense of build. And lastly, I added this shred guitar at the end here just to give a huge fill.
big explosion there, obviously. You'll notice in this piece that everything is timed directly to the cut. Every drum hit, every guitar swell, every French horn crescendo, every string sweep, it's all timed to the cut. And that's something that's very important, especially when you can design your own music for a piece. It's important to watch the cut and build around it. Make sure the swells are happening in the right places, the crescendos, the hits, everything. Make sure it's all happening right with the cut. That way you bring the viewer into the piece more and help them to feel exactly what's happening on camera. Lastly, I want to show you how to get your overall mix sounding better with a little more punch and clarity. So I'm going to bring up a channel EQ here on the master bus. This is going to affect the entire mix as a whole. So I've listened to this mix and I've realized that uh, maybe it's a little mucky or a little muddy. So I'm going to do a simple curve at about 200 hertz. Remember that subtlety is the key and keeping wide on your curves is very important. Don't use narrow curves when dealing with the master bus. So I'll bring it down about, about two decibels there and maybe a little more top end at 2K here. And uh, lastly, I'll add a little air at the top at about two decibels. And um, let's hear that. So that gives me a little more clarity in my mix, gets rid of some of the low end frequencies. Also, I'm going to bring up a compressor on the overall mix um, to level out the dynamics a little bit. Um, so I'll open up this compressor. The same rule of thumb applies here. Subtlety is the key on the master bus. So we're talking like one to two decibels of compression and keep your attack and release knobs very slow. Um, that way you don't hear the compressor reacting to the dynamics of the piece. A ratio of about um, maybe two to one, one 1.5 to 2 to 1, somewhere around there. And let's play this. So there we go. That'll help level out the dynamics a little bit. So we've got a pretty good sounding mix here. From here, I would export it as a stereo file and bring it into my sound design session and start mixing volumes with the sound design. So stick around for the next tutorial. I'm actually going to be releasing this music for free download. And uh, you're welcome to use that in your pieces if you'd like. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.